Hello everyone, um, Jacques from Dapper Shave. So I've had um, questions around um, lapping plates, um, lapping stones, how to dress them and so forth. So I decided to quickly put out this video. Um, I want to make excuse up front, there might be some construction noise in the background, so um, please just um, bear with me. I'm standing outside, I've got a, um, a sink here on this side um, where I do my owning. This is a polished uh, granite top, um, it's flat enough for me. Um, so, how I um, so first of all, you do not need a lapping plate. I've been using wet dry sand paper on a flat surface like this forever. Um, the reason is um, stuff like a hard Arkansas. Forget about lapping a diamond plate or something like that. It will just destroy it overnight. So, um, and also, as you know me, I want to try and keep things um, as cheap as possible. Granite top, it's clean. Um, this is a new sheet of, um, of sandpaper. I've already wet it, but more importantly, I've wet the surface. I'm sticking this on. Um, here's the stone we're going to use um, for demonstration purposes. It's an old vintage um, Rapport 6. So we're just going to do this side to show you guys how, how I lap and then also to, to finish a stone. So I know this stone isn't flat because I use it a lot for pocket knives. So what the guys do is they, um, they put the marking on there and then um, you just keep um, working away on the sandpaper and you just keep on working the stone now depending on how they are how abrasive the sandpaper is is how quick you make progress so this is a, a thousand grit um, sandpaper and as you can see on the stone I'm just gonna rinse it off No more pencil marks this side and that side, so obviously this area is the area that gets worked a lot when I do stones. So um, what you do is you just continue until all these marks are away. And then you know your stone is lapped and flat and um, ready for use. So we'll be tracking so you can see um, there's still a lot of work to do. Now I'm not going to spend um, a lot of time um, showing you guys until that's gone but when those marks are gone um, you know the stone's flat other maintenance things on a stone is obviously I like um, putting on a beveled edge and this is specifically um, for straight razors um, but also if you've got um, knives you do on it the reason for that is um, if you've got a 90 degree corner um, the edge can easily bite into it if you've got it beveled there's a there's a safety area there so um, that's one thing secondly a 90 degree corner um, is a weak thing something round or beveled um, is a whole lot stronger so it will um, make sure your, 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 your stone doesn't take punishment um, quite easily and crack and chip. So if you've got it beveled and the sharp edges round, it's just a, a stronger stone um, from, a, uh, from a maintenance perspective. So I do obviously all the sides um, of the stone and you just keep going and, until it's there all right so that's how i maintain a stone i want to show you um this is a small little cuticle and you'll see how the um 
the bevels um, are nicely on here even these edges here round them off and at the bottom of the stone okay so um, I'm gonna quickly show you the stone I was working on is very very hard this one it's a synthetic stone this is a natural stone so on this um, wet ray sandpiper it will um, it will cut quickly this is one of the stones I still want to get flat and you'll see the problem in this stone is this area here small little indentation I know that so um, we're going to quickly work this until it's away this piece of sandpaper it's a thousand grit um, has already taken a bit of punishment with that other stone and go see you on the edge here and that area is what we need need to work so um, let's maybe move this piece of sandpaper away here's another one fresh you'll see it's a thousand grit um, if you've got heavy lifting to do um, use a coarser stone um, and then move up to where you want the stone um, dressed now dressing is the final step you're finishing on so obviously if you look at this I'm dressing my stones on a, on a thousand grit fundamentally um, you need to decide what, what works for you a lot of people will say do 600 um, 1000 is too much do 2000 play around, figure out what works for you and get it done ok so you will see um, on a fresh piece of paper this cuticle um, will sort itself quite quickly so it's still this little mark here you see okay so that's how you um, flatten your stones why I don't use lapping plates um, leave your comments and suggestions below um, if you want to see other other um, other types of videos um, regards holding stones and so forth and then I'll, uh, I'll get them out so for me today was um, maintenance specifically on this little stone I want to quickly show you the, um, the backing on it, the slate backing this originally was a single stone and you'll see uh, it's got this bad piece at the back which was starting to crack and these are what they call toxic inclusions um, and moreover here was a spot on the side I didn't like so um, that's worn away so in hindsight maybe I shouldn't have cut it but um, I did so I use this as a slurry stone and this is a small little cuticle I use on pocket knives um, even finishing off um, sword edges by hand um, and so forth so I've been going now for 9 minutes in this video and um, this is not rocket science it is uh, rubbing and keeping going and making sure the surfaces are flat so that they are usable to work off there we go look at this this is really um, a beautiful stone cuticle I don't know what it is um, it cuts really 
um, quickly. Maybe I can uh, This is a little home I carry with me a lot, um, especially if I go camping or if guys go hunting, um, they always rely on me to keep the edge of shave um, slaughter ready. So um, I'm just going to finish off with this edges and then I'm going to step off this video. Thank you for your time. Speak later. It will change purple now because obviously I'm using the Belgian blue at the back. <laughs>